I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Ken Gerdla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Amrita Priyadarshini and this is FBC News. Tonight, pastor accused of rape says it was physical lessons and not rape. Murderer sentenced to life imprisonment. And expect changes to Fiji's foreign policies, PM tells world leaders. Closing submissions in the rape trial of 75-year-old Back to Eden Church pastor Ioane Vakandranu were made at the Suva High Court today. Vakandranu is charged with raping two girls who were members of his ministry in 2013. He has said it was not rape, that he was giving physical lessons the alleged victims. Sharon Shivan filed this report earlier today. Pastor Iwane Vakandranu says whatever he did with the two alleged victims was part of his ministry's teachings as he was a doctor and a teacher to all his followers. The alleged rape happened between September and October 2013 during one-on-one -on -one interviews. During cross-examination, Vakandranu was asked whether he was married to any of the women he was alleged to have raped, to which he said the church members had already accepted the rule of the church, which was that all female members would call him their spouse and that they were not to marry outside. In her closing remarks this afternoon, state lawyer Siteri Navia said any consent should be made freely and voluntarily, which did not happen in this case. She said the pastor made a false representation to the victims that they cannot go out into the world and teach something which they have not experienced. Defense lawyer Semi Tinivata reminded the court that the first state witness said she knew what was going to happen. He added that the first state witness was still a member of the same church. The defense also questioned why the second victim held the leadership position in the church for two years, why she kept silent for two years and only reported the matter to police when her mother complained. Judge Justice Vincent Pereira will sum up the case on Friday. Sharin Shivan. FBC News. The Lambasa High Court sentenced a man to life imprisonment today for murdering 79-year-old Babu Ram in Bua four years ago. Siutaseru seen here with a brown shirt is charged for murder, burglary and attempted arson. The court heard that Seru along with Asaili Rambolea, also of Bua, wearing the blue bula shirt while being intoxicated wore masks and robbed Ram of $350. Seru told the court he struck Babu Ram on the neck as he could easily identify them. The duo then tried to set the home alight to erase evidence of the killing. Seru will be eligible for parole after serving 19 years, while Rambolea is sentenced to 12 years and will be eligible for parole after serving 9 years. Now changes are expected to Fiji's foreign policies. Prime Minister Vorangibaini Marama, who's taken up the Foreign Minister's portfolio, made the statement at the 71st session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York today. Scrutinizing international relations is first on the list of changes for Beni Marama. But we intend in future to choose our friends in a more discerning manner and to align ourselves more closely with those countries that share our underlying values and principles. The Prime Minister and new Foreign Minister says these include adherence to international law, human rights and dignity. This change of direction will not be sudden. It is certainly not going to produce a dramatic change in the international company that Fiji keeps. The Prime Minister has also called on other nations for support as it bids to seek membership of the UN Human Rights Council for the two-year term that commences in 2018. Ritika Pratap. FBC News.
Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has made an appeal to all nations to ratify the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Fiji was the first country in the world to ratify the agreement and lodge the ratification instruments. Bainimarama says the scientific predictions that the two-degree cap on global warming over pre-industrial levels agreed to in Paris is not enough to save us. He highlighted the effect of Cyclone Winston on Fiji seven months ago. In common with other small island developing states, we are facing a nightmare scenario in which a single event scoring a direct hit could wipe out our economy and set us back for decades. The Fiji Times, its editorial staff and two others charged with communal antagonism are expected to make a plea on 6th October. Editor Fred Wesley and publisher Hank Arts are charged along with former politician Anare Ravula and Fiji Labour Party politician Josaya Wangambada. Law firm Mandolis has withdrawn as counsel for the Fiji Times and its editorial staff. Editor Fred Wesley and publisher Hank Arts will now be represented by Faisal Hanif. Former politician Anare Ravula will be represented by Nancy Chu and Aman Singh will be the counsel for Fiji Labour Party politician Josaya Wangambada. The new lawyers have sought time to go through disclosures. The four are alleged to have made or caused to be published a statement that is likely to incite dislike, hatred or antagonism of the Muslim community. Now, it's alleged that Wangambada wrote a letter to the editor in the Itoke publication Ne Lalakai with antagonistic comments against Muslims. The Denarao Bailey Bridge in Nandi will be removed and used to replace another bridge near Korolevu. The bridge, valued at around $700,000, had been destined for New Zealand but will now be retained in Fiji. Alan Stoltz has the story. The Bailey Bridge will be used as a temporary bridge, says Pacific Marine and Civil Solutions Managing Director Noel McManaway. The beauty of this Bailey Bridge that we purchased, it's a dual lane, uh, full capacity load bridge, so you can put it in, it has no restrictions on it whatsoever for its operations. So it will allow Fiji Roads Authority to then redesign the bridge that's failed. Parallel to the old bridge is the new one. Despite a few delays caused indirectly by tropical cyclone Winston, McManaway says the final product will be worth it. It's been a lot longer than we expected, um, but I think it's a, it's a good product. With uh, This is one of the, well, it is the first steel trapezoid style bridges in this country. Uh, there was a lot of conjecture about changing to a steel bridge because many of the bridges that failed in Fiji were of a steel construction, uh, but this is quite a different design. And it's really the only way that we could supply a, a bridge with a potential 100-year lifespan. From the demolition of the old bridge to installing the new one, the project has taken nine months to complete and has gone from $7.5 million to now costing $9 million. The new bridge is expected to be open in the next four weeks, subject only to the utility suppliers' installation of their final updates. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, reefs damaged by TC Winston will take 10 years to recover. And Miss Fiji, ready to take on the world. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 and ser. Welcome back here with FBC News. It will take over a decade for reefs damaged by TC Winston to recover. This was determined by a recent survey by Wildlife Conservation Society and Eleanor Trangaiview tells us more. This was the state of our reefs about two months after tropical cyclone Winston, a devastating sight to say the least. This footage from the Wildlife Conservation Society shows the damage to the reef at the Vatura Passage. In some parts the reefs are really 
looked like they were completely smashed up and crushed and so there's not much living coral around and it's now been overtaken by a lot of algae but the good thing is that you know there are places that survive that so it's really important that we get the right message to our tourism industry that we do have fantastic reefs for them to come and dive on but we need to make sure we protect those and don't over exploit those. Wildlife Conservation way, Society Director Dr. BC, Sangeeta Mangubai told the Northern Futures Forum today really that we need to understand come reefs that didn't suffer any damage will be under pressure and it will take years for the damaged ones to recover. The problem is when it's little pieces of coral, what happens is the waves and the, uh, move them around and so nothing can grow back on it. As a result of the damaged reef, fish supply to our fisheries dependent communities will be affected. Already the Mbua communities have reported a marked decrease in their catch. Learning from other places, we've seen that um, other places after Category 5 cyclones, they've seen a depression in their fisheries for up to two years. To help the coral reefs recover, the public is urged to reduce stress on corals. According to Dr. Mangubai, we need to make sure that we reduce pollution or any sedimentation on our coral to help them grow. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. And meanwhile, a fisheries forum being held in Lombasa is the largest gathering of fishery stakeholders in the Northern Division, where they are discussing their challenges and possible solutions. World leaders have been urged by Prime Minister Vorenga Benimarama to heavily promote the United Nations Conference on Oceans that's due to happen in nine months. Speaking at the Fiji-Sweden summit in New York, Bainimarama said for a small island developing state like Fiji, extreme weather events and rising sea levels caused by climate change is a pressing issue. He says pollution, overfishing and the destruction of marine habitats have reached a crisis point in many parts of the world. Fiji will be co-hosting the conference with Sweden. Five crew members of the Lomaiviti Princess 3 have been fired after pictures of passengers sleeping in the toilets went viral on social media. The crew members include deck officers and hostess. Gandra Shipping Director George Gandra says they did not do their job and as the owner, he felt it was right to terminate their employment. He says he was out of the country when the incident happened and upon his return, he took action and re reiterated that the incident should not have happened. The Lomaiviti Princess 3 has the capacity to take 700 passengers. The Ministry of Agriculture has identified climate change resilient crop varieties that can cope with changing weather patterns. Permanent Secretary for Agriculture Jitendra Singh says these findings will improve food security in Fiji. Senia Nimboila reports. After years of research, farmers now have access to information to help them combat climate change. In the book, booklet, a guide, uh, a guide selected from a wide range of uh, root crops in Fiji. This is based on years of uh, research carried out in Fiji uh, over the years and also collaboration between national, regional and international organizations and networks. The Agriculture Ministry is optimistic that the booklet will help the farmers, especially with the constant changing weather patterns experienced in the country. Just launched the climate resilient uh, booklet uh, for different crop varieties, and uh, what we are uh, trying to do is to prepare our farmers, the agriculture sector in general, uh, and uh, strengthen our own uh, ministry's uh, technical uh, services in educating farmers on crop resilient uh, varieties of different crops, uh, climate resilient. The ultimate aim is to replenish food sources and sustain food security. Not only is it awareness materials, but it also promotes conservation and sustainable use of these resources in Fiji. It also encourages us to revisit our traditional varieties, our traditional food crops, and also to have a resilient agricultural system in Fiji. The Agriculture Ministry also has plans to improve and maintain land productivity. Sainia Nimboila, FPC News. The ill-fated RFNS Kiro has now been stuck on the Dhakoyawa Reef near Makali Makaluva Island for more than three months and its eventual rescue is in doubt. Navy Commander John Fox confirms that the vessel remains out of operation and that most of its equipment has been removed. However, a number of factors have hampered the vessel's salvage. 
FPC News understands that a briefing is now being prepared for the new Minister for Defence, Ratu Inoke Kumbombola, to advise the Navy on the further progress or not of rescuing the Navy ship. Commander Fox, along with the Commander of the Republic of Fiji Military Forces, Commander William Nai. Nopoto are currently away in the United States and are scheduled to brief the minister early next week. An official public statement on the RFNS Kiro situation is expected to be released shortly thereafter. Newly appointed Assistant Minister for Health and Medical Services, Alexander O'Connor says he will focus on public health. O'Connor took his oath of office before President Major General retired Giorgio Conrote at the State House this morning. The new Assistant Minister says his appointment is targeted at non-communicable diseases. Focusing on, on public health, uh, it's a big challenge. As you will appreciate that uh, NCDs come under public health and it's, uh, it's an area that's uh, or is saying it's plaguing not only Fiji, but the region and the world uh, as a whole. Preparations for the Miss World 2016 pageant is progressing well. For Miss World Fiji, Pooja Priyanka, the 24-year-old jetted into the country yesterday for final touch-ups to her national costume. Grace Narayan has more. The design for Miss World Fiji's national costume is still very much under wraps at the moment. However, the inspiration behind it is no secret. So the gown this year will be around diversity and representing the several different cultures that Fiji has to offer. And the gown should embody all the qualities of the multicultural community that we have in Fiji. Miss Fiji contestant hopes to draw more attention to the struggles that people face because of climate change in Fiji and the Pacific. So the, <laughs> the purpose this year project is surrounding climate change and this in fact, it will be based around the Thailevu area of Gelikuru. National costume this year will also reflect this Fiji's diverse background. There's two underlying themes about the, the concept of the costume. Uh, one is the diversity, because Fiji is very unique that we're made out of different cultures. So I took that into consideration. And the other is basically on conserv conserving and pre preserving our culture. Pranka is calling on the public to support her journey as she aims to come back with nothing less than a win. Grace Narayan, FBC News. Now to sports and let's find out what's the latest with Jamie. And I come Rita and good evening in sports after the break. Burini two Cowboys making a name for themselves in rugby league. And Nandranga fights for football survival. This and more coming up. Radio Fiji 2 Radio Fiji 2 Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan. It will be more than just a rugby match for the Mburini 2 Cowboys when they clash with the police sharks this weekend. The Rabe's Cowboys are desperate for win to attract more people from their province to join the sport. Rohit Deo reports. Cuts right through and where is that reverse pass? The reverse pass is in! He goes in! The Burenitu Cowboys don't just follow the ABCs of Rugby League. In fact, they pride themselves in their own pattern. The final this weekend is dedicated to the Ra fans who are expected to come out in numbers. Cowboys, we have won. This is not our team. Eh? This will um, our team is for our new team. So, um, thanks for the Turanga Buri and uh, Tinala for accepting the introduction of Rugby League in here. So, um, Expecting a uh, good number of our supporters to be there and cheering the Cowboys. Fiji National Rugby League Chief Executive Timothy Nalemba says Saturday's match is expected to change a lot of things in Rai in terms of the sport. The Cowboys to be playing in the uh, final this week is going to be a, um, is going to play a very huge role in opening the doors for uh, more boys from Rai playing rugby league. 
Opponents, the police sharks, who are favorites on paper, are respecting a good battle from the Cowboys. We respect Mburni too, because they reach the fan, we know they are the champ. So the preparation is just normal for us as we approach for the fan. Uh, we just do our normal thing at the ground, what we always do. Final kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Saturday at Nandis Prince Charles Park. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Former Fiji Sevens player Nandranga playmaker Alivereti Vetokani has made the cut into the Telecom Fiji Warriors 26 member squad for the America Pacific Challenge. Vetokani has been in an outstanding form for the Stallions in the HFC Bank Fairbrother Challenge matches. Nandranga loose forward Nemani Nangusa has also made it into the final squad. Nandranga has 13 players in the Fiji Warriors team, which is grouped with Canada A and Uruguay A. The America Pacific Challenge will be held from the 8th to the 16th of October in Uruguay. It's all guns blazing now for the Nanga football side who are doing all they can to remain in the Premier Division and escape being relegated to the Senior Division. Vasnil Prasad caught up with the interim president Tiko Matawalu. Comes in quickly, now into Benji Makutu. Nandronga are the giants when it comes to rugby. Sadly though, the same can be said for football. Once a powerhouse in the 11 aside game, the club that was formed back in 1938 are just a few games away from being demoted. We are, we are actually not focusing on uh, winning the IDC. We are actually trying to put a team together because we feel that uh, the National League is more important. And to achieve this, the interim president's focus now is a major cleanup. There's a, a lot of uh, improvements that's needed in the association. A lot of improvement is needed in players, a lot of improvement is needed with coaches, a lot of improvement is needed, needed with clubs and club officials. Nandro has a rich history in football. They have won three IDC titles, three Battle of the Giants trophies, two Fiji Fact titles and three league competitions. Our district team is actually not performing up to that level. So it's just a matter of uh, uh, rebuilding and a, a matter of nurturing and molding these players. Uh, it's just only this has to be their worst season yet, having uh, not won any tournament in 2016. In we have uh, players in our system that has been there for quite some time. And uh, there have been a lot of disturbances in terms, in, in terms of in, in the affairs of our association. And uh, that didn't allow these players to actually uh, come out. To the box hesitation. For now, it's a waiting game for a side that's considered 12 goals and 7 losses so far in the league competition. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Super Football team is likely to be without their two key players in the court's inter-district championships next month. Super Pres President Mahendra Prasad says goalkeeper Benyamino Matainangara and striker Samuel Nrundru have applied for their release to join Latoko Football. Meanwhile, the Capital City side received a timely boost of $7,500 from Finance Pacific as they prepare for the IDC. Yeah. Now we have seen that the best prepared team will definitely win the tournament. So I think uh, this uh, boost from Finance Pacific uh, has uh, lift uh, uh, Suva's morale for the preparation. Uh, this finance will, uh, will help uh, Suva Football Association in preparing for IDC. The IDC tournament will be played from the 5th to the 10th of October. That's it from Sports This Evening. It's back to Amrita now with business. Four hundred and sixty-two estates have been distributed by the Fiji Public Trustee Corporation Limited over the last 10 years. The estates were part of inherited wealth with a value of $30.2 million. Ali Kimbia reports. Ever since 2006, the Fiji Public Trustee Corporation Limited has maintained and administered estates for the benefit of all Fijians. I think over the last 10 years we have distributed over 462 estates at, uh, at a value of 30.2 million. And of that, uh, also in the last 10 years, uh, on average, we, uh, we administer and manage uh, over 10,800 estates, uh, trusts. Akala says managing estates is not easy. One of the challenges we continue to face is the, the uh, conflict that continue to arise amongst family members, especially in uh, instances where there's no will. Board Chairman Iqbal Janiv says a lot of work has been put in to enhance their services. We've had to look at new things, 
um, because uh, the what, you know, what we were doing initially was not sufficient to keep us going. So new initiatives had to be uh, found to uh, to continue the work. Apart from managing estate, the Fiji Public Trustee Corporation Limited provides the largest wheel service to the people of Fiji. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Conditions were sunny and warm in most parts of the country today. We take a quick look at temperatures and there were slight changes in the temperatures. Lambasa was recorded the coolest at 28 degrees while Savo Savo rose to be the warmest at 33. Now for tomorrow you can expect more sunshine with slight chance of showers in the eastern areas of Fiji. Looking on to Friday and the weekend, you can expect sunny conditions to continue with a cloud or two. At sea, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots and moderate to rough seas are expected. Recapping the main stories, a pastor accused of rape says it was physical lessons and not rape. Murderer sentenced to life imprisonment and expect changes to Fiji's foreign policies, PM tells world leaders. For these stories and others, you can always tune in to our sister radio station, Gold FM. This week's poll question, and we are asking, should the new Denara Bridge be named the Olympic Bridge? You can visit our FPC website to take part. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. Good night. I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from the Village. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Moses from Valley. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Marida Manako. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.